Hello Captains, this is Metaman. Today we're looking at a Tier 8 battle that I had in the Lowenheart. Once again, showing a bottom tier match. Or me being bottom tier in a match. Lowenheart, um, she has great rockets at hitting cruisers. She has really good bombs as in potential damage on her HE bombs. Her torpedoes are her weak points and her secondaries it's probably not the optimum setup but I ever set up. I use the same captain as my Graf Zeppelin. I don't get her in range very often to be able to use those secondaries but that's how I ever set up. Here I want to show something that I don't see a lot of CV captains doing. Not saying that I'm doing it better, but just saying I do it a little differently. Um, especially when you're bottom tier CV. I'm not trying to attack this Benson yet. I'm going to line up an attack, but my goal here is to keep him lit up so that my destroyers can get in position and at the beginning of the battle, especially, it's an information war, as in you're trying to figure out where they're at, and long as uh, their CV isn't spotting our, spotting our DDs, we're trying to get him lined up so that we can start attacking and our people start attacking him. We, we're not trying to get killed by his AA, we're just trying to keep him lit up. I tried to wait until I could get a shot on him, and then I seen these cruisers behind him, so I wanted to get a second shot on these guys. Watch the AP or, uh, rockets. Those are pretty nice. They're tier 8 rockets in a tier 6 CV. But just like I do with any of the CVs, towards the beginning of the match, I'm just feeling things out, seeing where people are. Not trying to put myself in a position that I'm going to be losing a ton of planes. When you're bottom tier, their AA is going to be better than your health of your plane. So you're wanting to play a little bit of safe. You're wanting to basically look for target to opportunity. That Benson to a low in heart, that Benson has really good AA. So I was just trying to keep him lit up, not let him eat my planes, and then line him up so that I could hit him and somebody else at the same time. I think that the cruisers mid-tier are in a tough spot right now. They're probably feeling like how the DDs have been feeling, as in they can be hunted by these <coughs> mid-tier German rockets. The DDs, I feel like, are kind of getting a reprieve from these German CVs. The torpedoes can hit them. On the low and hard, it's kind of hard because they are slow. But the the Vesser, the Rhine, they're a little bit faster than the low and hearts. But the low and heart has a lot better secondary. So if it turns into a secondary battle at the end against a DD, I feel okay with that. Com combined with my airplanes also. At this time, I see how everybody split up. I'm going to do my usual heading over to the the weak side try to help that side finish up doing my pre drop so that I don't lose too many planes when I first got the low and heart same way as if one of you guys first get it you'll probably feel o underwhelmed because in most CVs, not German CVs, but in most CVs, torpedoes are your main source of damage and kills. In the low and heart, that's not going to be the case. You're going to get the kills here if you're killing, you're hitting something that's really crippled already. But they're not damage dealers, really. 
One thing I do like about their this Lowenhart's uh, <coughs> Lowenhart's torpedoes is the arming range is really short. I like that. That means I can get right up on them, let it off, let out the torps because they are so short range that it's nice to get up close. Your HE bombs, you have a really good chance of fire. You have pretty good accuracy if you get down on top of them and take your time and drop. I try to use a mixture so that I don't run out of any planes, especially when I'm bottom tier. When I'm top tier, you can, can kind of just stick to whatever your main damage dealers are, but when you're bottom tier, you want to ration that out so that you don't get depleted of a certain type of plane. See here with the Graf Zeppelin, um, I do like the Graf Zeppelin AP bombs, but it's uh, kind of a coin flip whether you're going to hit them or not sometimes. With these, I feel pretty good, so that's one kill. I hear sometimes people talking about that when you're bottom tier in a CV that you're pretty much the eyes and a deterrent with your fighters and you're just supposed to be spotting and that's in my book that's not the case and I think that I probably have uh, a better than average win rate when it comes to being the bottom tier um, because I don't play exactly that way, I do try to keep my planes as safe as I can, but I am going to go in there and try to get damage. If you YOLO, you're going to be deplaned. If you sit back, you're not going to help the team. So, in the battle, you'll see decent damage, not huge damage, but we're just trying to contribute we're looking for weakened ships we're looking for light skinned targets you see me keeping my I'm trying to keep this DD lit you see me keeping my CV pretty close really close actually I'm trying to keep him lit up so that someone can get him I really don't care to waste my ammo on him. I'd rather come over here and hit the Odin. You notice I'm just playing around these islands, trying to not stay lit by this Odin so that I can just keep firing off on him. Strategically wise, this this could again got bad for us right here. <clears throat> this one Odin is holding a CV player and multiple ships chasing him over here and he's doing a great job of delaying us um, really the only reason I'm over here trying to kill him after he he's gonna keep running or not really running but just enough to try to get these guys to have to chase him it's not a good way of allocating our our DPM we're chasing him He's actually helping his team a lot more than what we are helping ours. But after I see that our team is not going to leave him, it ends up being that I'm going to come back over there and help. Just because I want him dead, not that I think that he's affecting the battle, affecting the battle, but he's affecting our allocation of DPM here. So in other words, if I kill him or help kill him, our other ships will have to come help on the other side of the map. You see that we're starting to lose the match. And I don't think our team is going to leave this guy. So we got to get him killed. So the t torpedo bombers... They have low speed, as in the torpedoes. I think that they have quick turnaround, 
as in agility. I think they have... Um, I like the low arming distance, as in being close. Here I'm coming over here thinking that, that Odin's dead, but... He's almost got like the Nelson feel to him. He, he's just going to keep living over there. Found me a cruiser. Going to try to get some damage. These rockets are nice. So if you have a choice... I would be going after trying to get the rockets and the bombs. Just live off of those two. Got rid of that cruiser before he could torp our guy. But the two you're really going to want to live off of is the rockets and then the bombs. Because if you live off the bombs first, you're going to have a higher damage per game because you're farming battleships. But you might end up with less kills per battle and affecting the battle less because it takes so much longer to kill those battleships. You're going to be farming good damage, but you're not going to be getting the quick kills and go help out with other ships. See this quick turnaround put me in position to be able to get another torpedo off. Just amazing how long uh, we've been over here messing with this one Odin. And he's going to go over here and try to start healing. I feel that like I said earlier, the mid-tier cruisers are in a tough spot right now because they're so light-skinned. These rockets just do a lot of damage to them, as in five, ten thousand. That's a huge differential, but five, ten thousand on a pop. And at mid-tiers, you're not able to heal that damage. So... It's, it's a pretty good amount of damage to them. Right here, create a fire. He puts it out, hoping to go back and finish him. I would have liked to have left him, but he he disappeared, so I want to make sure I keep him lit up. Not sure if my other ship was able to spot him or not. Maybe it was just around the island, but... He's gotten this low. We want to go ahead and finish him off. You see that we're losing in points. We're losing in ships. I think a lot of the reason why we're in this position is because we've spent so, so much time chasing this Odin. So once again, hats off. So I get my torps off, and the other guy still gets to kill. So now at least we're three ships to three. Right here, since the planes came from this direction... I'm feeling like the oh, aircraft carriers over here, but he's not. It's a tied up match. I'm figuring I'm going to send my ship into cap. A 
in North Carolina. <clears throat> that is going to be a, a hard ship for me to attack. Now, I do have the Lowenheart. I have the Graf Zeppelin. I'm just naming off the premium ones. I, I have the Ark Royal, the Saipan, the Enterprise, the Kaga, uh, the Indomitable. And they're all strong in their own right. Now, the Lowenheart, I feel, is really strong. I, the reason I feel she's stronger than say the Ark Royal isn't because of her necessarily gun or damage potential as in per shell or per bomb but where she passes the Ark Royal up is the speed of the planes the Ark Royal suffers because it takes so long for her planes to get there <clears throat> do I like the Ark Royal yes do I have a winning record in her yes um, now I only have like 20 battles in my Lowenheart and I'm right a little over 70%. I'm sure that's going to come down. I'll probably be around 65%. But my Arc Royal, she's in the high 50%, um, which is fine. But I feel like if you had faster airplanes and could get to the battle a little faster, you'd have a higher impact. So the Lowenheart can have more of an impact just because she can get her planes to the battle. Same way as some don't like the Graf Zeppelin, she has average planes at best, but she's able to get her planes there so much faster, that's what makes up the difference with her in the combination of that and her secondaries. That's just my opinion, doesn't make it a fact, but that's how I win with them. I win fine in my graph. I'm over 60%. I win with this Lowenheart over 70%. But she'll probably come back down into the 60s. My Arc Royals a little under 60. My other guys, none of my CVs besides the Midway is under 50%. And I believe she's at 48%. But I haven't played her since I, I bought her. I wasn't probably ready to use her yet, and we're talking six months, eight months ago is when I've really played her, and I think I've grown as a player since then. So if I went back to her, I'm pretty sure I'd probably be maybe not 55%, but I'd be over 50, and I might do that just to prove it, but Lowenheart is a nice ship. See, these are the positions that the Graf Zeppelin and the Lowenheart look for. Say late in the battle when there's only two or three ships left and they are a traditional CV or a DD or a light skins cruiser that's almost dead. This is where your secondaries really make a difference because a lot of games come down to a coin flip towards the end. A lot of games are stomps one way or the other but a lot of games are close. And your secondaries could make a difference at the end of that battle. So once again, we got pretty decent damage. Got us a couple kills. Feel like we had a pretty good impact on the game. Wish we wouldn't have took as long as we did over at the Odin. Just... Hoping to stay alive here, get the win. Time's running out. Being bottom tier at tier 6 versus tier 8 ships, I believe, is harder than being a tier 8 in a tier 10 match as the CV. So if you're having hard times at being a tier 6 CV versus tier 8, don't feel bad because I feel I can have a bigger impact in my Saipan, Enterprise, Indomitable. I'm not quite as good at my Kaga, but you get the idea. I can have a higher impact at those guys at Tier 10, against Tier 10s, than I can with my Arc Royal and my 
Lowenhart versus tier 8. Arc Royal, it's because of lack of speed, you're in the, the AA bubble longer. Lowenhart, I'm having decent impact in tier 8 battles, but I, I'm, I think I'm getting a little lucky so far. But this is Meta underscore Man 2002. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and you find it helpful. You guys have a great day.